Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. I'm E.G. Marshall. There's nothing so ridiculous or far-fetched that it hasn't already been said at some time in some place by some philosopher and been considered and debated and in many cases enshrined as immortal profundity. Which proves what? That there is a thin line between wisdom and folly. But that's something you always knew, right? What's the matter, Tom? I, uh, I just found out about the war. The war? What war? Now, you know what war, Helen. All right, Tom. There's a war. A war to the death. You understand? Oh, sure. I understand. And you're in it, too. Well, if you're in it, I want to be in it. But the trouble is, we're on opposite sides. <laughs> mystery drama, Little Lucy's Lethal Libation, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by X-Lax and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If a man can write a better book, preach a better sermon, or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor... Though he live in the wood, the world will make a beaten path to his door. Unfortunately, Mr. Emerson's fine philosophic sentiment isn't exactly true. The world won't beat a path to his door unless somebody says to the world, Hey, world, stop, look, listen. Here's the better book, the better sermon, the better mousetrap. We find ourselves in a hospital for the criminally insane. Mr. Raglan, are you ready? Ready for what? Ready to attempt the beginnings of therapy. (sighs) Why? So that you may be restored to society. There's nothing wrong with me. Mr. Raglan, I can do nothing Dr. Pascal, there's nothing you can do in any event. And why do you say that? Because you're a woman. I'm a doctor of medicine. Now, why can't I have a man, doctor? Because none is available at this time. And why is that? I don't know. You would have to ask the managing director. The managing director is Dr. Ruth Harmon? Yes. Isn't that strange? She happens to be a woman? She was appointed by the governor. Governor Geraldine Mary McHugh. Yes, And you still say I'm crazy. I never said you were crazy. Yes, I understand. You only said I'm, uh, I'm disturbed, right? That's a euphemism, doctor. Euphemisms. That's the opiate of America. Kids aren't stupid. They're underachievers. We no longer have criminals. We have people with social problems. People don't die. They go to their reward. Mr. Raglan, is it necessary to raise your voice? You mean shout? Sure. I know all about euphemisms, Doctor. That's how I make my living. Correction. Made, made my living. Before they got me. They? Oh, come on. Get off it. You know who they are. You're one of them. Mr. Raglan, I... I wish you'd let me help you. Help me do what? What are your plans for us? Plans? Now, why do I ask? I know. You won't kill us off. You need us just as we needed you. For pleasure, for work... But you'll reverse the roles. Which roles? We shall tend the home and raise the children. Mr. Raglan, what is troubling you? Oh, my. You haven't listened to a word I said. Could you make sense of what you've been saying? Now, why don't we try a calm, ordered, rational approach? 
You intend to play the game. Everything neat, precise, orderly. All right. I won't fight you. You insist there's some kind of plot. Tell me about it. Doctor, why are we wasting time? What else is there to do? If you won't talk to me, you go back to your cell. I mean, room. And play solitaire. So, tell me about it. Why? You're not going to help me. Okay. Then do it for yourself. What have you got to lose? Now, tell me. When did it happen? How did it happen? Where did it happen? <sighs> Where? When? That's easy. How? Well, how do these things happen, Doctor? How... How do you... Why do you get that sudden flash of insight that changes the appearance of the entire world? I remember... I came home that night. Did anything happen today, Tom? What could happen? I don't know. What did you do? Anything unusual? No. Well, yes, I did an unusual thing, I suppose. Yeah? I went to the store and bought a case of... Uh, guess what? Uh, just tell me, huh? Guess. A case of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. Guess again. Uh, look, tell me or don't tell me. I bought a whole case of Little Lucy's Lively Libation. Oh, that insipid slop. Whatever made you do that? Because... Because it has just become your account. Oh, yes, so it has. And for the sake of form, we should have it in the house. That's how I found out. Now, shouldn't we be out celebrating? Celebrating what? You were just promoted. Was I? Well, weren't you? Well, uh... Let's assume I was a colonel in the Russian army. Oh, please, And Tom. I was stationed in Moscow, where all the action is. The bright lights, the theaters, and so forth. How many did you have before you came home? And the home? top brass called me in and said, Tom, we have decided to make you a general and send you to a brand new post way, way out, out in Siberia. Well? Well, what? Would that be a promotion, really? Tom! Has this happened? Helen, to... I have just been sent to Siberia. What are you saying? Oh, look, I, I'm going inside to watch TV. If I have to tolerate incomprehensible nonsense, at least it won't be for my husband. You know, all along, I thought that I was on my way up. Well, aren't you? Oh, no. Everybody kept saying, Tom Raglan, he's the guy to watch in this agency. Well, aren't you? The yum yummy account, Barco the Mutt. He was all mine, wasn't he? Oh, yes, dear. The most fantastically creative gimmick in the entire history of dog food promotion. Absolutely. Well, I doubled their volume. Of course you did, dear. Will you quit patronizing me? I quadrupled the agency billings. And is this my reward, Little Lucy's lively libation? Little Lucy is a major American corporation. Do you know the kind of advertising they do? Ever hear any, read any, see any? Well, I... The answer I... is no. Do you know why? They don't do any. Oh, I'm sure they must do some advertising. Yeah, to the Little Lucy Company, advertising is the label on the bottle and the sign on the truck, period. Then why do they need an agency? Because they want professionals who make sure the printing is always legible and sharp. Ensure that the colors are always bright and true. Is that advertising? Well, obviously, they want you to upgrade the account. Yeah, 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 sure. That's exactly what she said, the old girl herself. Big Mama, the boss lady, called me in and told me, Tommy, darling, right now, little Lucy's lively libation is a moribund account. But we know that you will make it rise like a phoenix from the dead. Oh, there, you see. I'll tell you what I see. She wanted to put me in a spot where I have to fail. What? Now, you heard me. But, but why? Because she's out to get me. Why? Because I'm a man. Tom, what are you saying? What was I saying? What had I said, Doctor? Certainly the words had come out before I was even aware of them. It was the first time I had ever entertained any such idea. Do you understand, Dr. Pascal? Yes, I understand. And suddenly, I accepted that fact as truth. Truth? Suddenly? That you were being destroyed because you were a man? Oh, yes, absolutely. 
The entire conspiracy revealed itself right then and there. And what did your wife say? She said... That's ridiculous. Ms. Christabel Valentine, our big boss lady, is giving the knife to every male member of the agency. One by one, the men have been made to walk the plank. No, that can't be. That can't be true. Uh, you hear how she said that? First, you were going to deny it. It shows where your true sympathies are. Tell me. I am being sent out on a suicide mission, and I'm not supposed to come back. Sell more advertising to little Lucy. Why, you might just as well try to sell freezers to Eskimos. Tommy, you know what you should do? Chuck it. The whole thing. You mean quit before I'm fired? Oh, you used to write plays, novels, poetry. Yeah, sure. I never sold a single one. But at least you were doing something creative. And just what do you think I'm doing now? The Barco the Mutt commercial is creative? <laughs> My name is Barco Barco the Mutt. And I love yum yummy and nothing else but. Well, it scans, doesn't it? Oh, it'll never get you buried in Westminster Abbey. It's where I live while I'm alive that worries me. I can't believe this is you talking, Tom. Why, you would read Shakespeare and Milton and Emily Dickinson. Tom, quit. Call boss lady Big Mama and quit. No. Oh, sure. How will we pay the rent? Oh, I can get a job teaching. Oh, you, oh, you can. I thought teaching jobs were scarce. Now, Martha Barley, who was dean of women when I... Well, anyway, now she's president of the university, and oh, I... Ah, 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 ah. So, you've had this all planned. Planned? You are going to support me. You supported me all the time we've been married. Oh, good Lord, it's worse than I thought. You're in on it, too. In on what? The plot. Don't ask me what plot. I will. The plot to take over. Oh, Tommy, you are not well. First, strip them of their jobs. Second, rob them of their manhood. I'm going to call a doctor. A woman doctor, no doubt. Tom, you've always liked Ursula Cardell. And third, destroy their sanity. Oh, no, no, Helen, it won't work. Because I'm going to fight back. We're all going to fight back. <laughs> You get to hear a great many extravagant things during these programs, but really, are they any more outrageous than what happens almost every day in real life? Obviously, Tom has detected a plot on the part of women to take over the world. Would you be willing to bet your life he's wrong? Or right? Well, it won't cost anything to wait just a few minutes to find out. Slowly, silently, even secretly, the pressures build. And we are unaware of the gathering forces. The eruption of a volcano can create a week of horror. A revolution can impose a year of terror. But these are only the finales, the explosive climaxes to quiet and hidden dramas that were centuries, even millennia, in the making. Just remember... There's always something brewing somewhere. Mr. Raglan, what did your wife say when you told her you were going to fight back? <sighs> she flounced out of the room, Dr. Pascal. You know how women flounce. And? And I think I suddenly felt like a fool. Why? Well, it occurred to me that while the boss lady at the shop doesn't like men, the women she hired were a lot better than the men they replaced. Well, that was certainly a rational analysis. And Helen had always been after me to realize my creative potential. She wanted me to quit. Why didn't you? Obviously, you despise that job. <sighs> quit to do what, Doctor? My name is Barco Barco the Mutt. It's just about as creative as I can get. And so I said, Tom, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop looking for plots. And the next morning, there was a note on my desk. Boss lady, big mama herself, wanted to see me. Mr. Raglan, I understand you're not happy. Well, why, uh, why am I off yum yummy? You're too good for yum yummy. Well, look how I made it sell. That was yesterday. Today, I need more billings from little Lucy. Well, that account's been lying dead here for years. Why now, all of a sudden? 
I asked Joe Dunning why he couldn't move little Lucy in all this time, and he couldn't give me a satisfactory answer. And that's why he was fired? Well, now you have got the job. And if I can't push little Lucy? It's a hard life we lead here on Madison Avenue. Yes, and who have you got lined up to take my place? Well, I expect you to succeed. Who's waiting in the wings? What's her name? Her name? Now, boss lady, you don't hire guys. You only fire them. You've got a date today with little Lucy. Little Lucy? Yes, Tom. There is a real-life little Lucy. She mixes up each batch of little Lucy's lively libation with her own little hands. I want you to begin talking about an entire across-the-board media campaign. Well, when did I have a chance to work one up? Tom, you were notified of your promotion yesterday. You have had 24 hours. I see. So that's how it is. Now, Thomas, whatever are you talking about? <laughs> I look into boss lady's eyes, and let me tell you, Dr. Pascoe, I read my fate. If I have any doubts at all, they vanish completely. I am being set up. Well, I'd make a fight out of it. Maybe I could just sell little Lucy on a huge multi-million dollar campaign. I reported to a private secretary for a brief up. I'm Peter Hatchett. You're from the agency? I believe uh, Mrs. Maryvale is expecting me. Oh, no, never say that. What? Mrs. Maryvale. Now, everyone must call her Little Lucy. Oh? You see, she thinks of herself still as Little Lucy. Is that a fact? Well, you know the Little Lucy story, of course. Ah, uh, no. So, obviously, you haven't done your homework, Mr. Raglan. Now, the material was sent to your office. Oh, is that so? Well, no, nobody get... Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance. Uh, oh, we, we have a beautiful book, which tells the inspiring story of little Lucy's lively libation. Yes, well, I must make sure to read it. Yes, well, over 60 years ago, when she was 12, little Lucy was playing in her mother's kitchen. Now, now she wanted to make Mama a delicious glass of lemonade. Yeah. And she wanted to make it special. So, she put in, you know, a little of this and a little of that, you know. Yes, I think so. And when her mother drank it, she exclaimed, Oh, my, it's the best I ever tasted. And she offered some to her friends and said, Here's little Lucy's lively libation. Oh. Is uh, something the matter with you, Mr. Ragland? Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing at all. Oh, dear, you look ill. No, I'm fine. Uh, well, well, everyone loved it so much, they decided to bottle it and sell it. And everyone thought the name was so catchy. Well, it is, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. And so they put little Lucy's picture on the label, wearing her adorable white organza frock. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's charming. And that's how it's been for the past 60 years. Oh, they tell me you wrote that wonderful Barco the Mutt commercial. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wouldn't it be marvelous if you could do one just like it for little Lucy? Oh, excuse me. Yes. Oh, yes, at once. You're to go right in. Well, Doctor, this was to be the selling job of my life. I walked into her office, and there she was, sitting at her desk. Little Lucy herself. An old, old lady. But she had a young, young face. It was exactly like the face of the little girl on the bottle. And I don't mind telling you, Doctor, it scared me. It was as if the rest of the body had grown old and withered, while the face remained ever firm and fresh and girlish. Who was her plastic surgeon, I wondered? You are the celebrated Tom Raglan. Well, I'm Tom Raglan. Uh, you're supposed to be a... A fireball. Yeah, I would uh, like you to consider a new marketing approach. <laughs> What's wrong with the way we've been doing it for the past 60 years? Well, for one thing... <sighs> That's why I was so fond of Joe Dunning. He, he never bothered me to buy new advertising ideas. He knew it would be a waste of time. Yeah, but we have a splendid idea. There is no such thing as a splendid idea for little Lucy. 
I want you to make sure we have enough labels printed that all the trucks have fresh, bright signs, and you will make me very happy. Excuse me. Yes? Yes, I'll be down to the syrup room presently. You see, Mr. Raglan, people buy little Lucy's lively libation because of the mystery. The mystery? You mean you haven't read the book and you pretend to be my account executive? Uh, well, uh, you Only see... Only I know the secret formulation. Only I regulate the equipment that makes the syrup concentrate, which is then shipped to our bottlers all over America. I see. Wouldn't that make a fantastic commercial from kitchen table That to... will be enough, Mr. Raglin. Yeah, but the public will be fascinated. Mr. Raglin, if you ever attempt to sell me as much as five cents worth of advertising, I shall be extremely displeased. Now, I shall expect you here this time tomorrow for a report. A report? And the present state of the labels for the little Lucy's lively libation bottles. That will be all for today. That was it, Doctor. This old nut was going to make me lose my job. So what did you do? Well, I called up a fellow I knew in another shop. He was always wanting me to come work over there. And did you get another job? Well, there was no other job, Doctor. You know, it's funny. While you're working, everybody has a spot for you. But when you really need something, everything seems to freeze up. Anyhow, he was on the way out himself. Oh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems his new boss had it in for him, so... she was looking for an excuse to fire him. He wasn't long for the job. Notice I said she. What significance is there in that? Are you kidding, Doctor? I began noticing things. I was starting to see fewer and fewer men around the office. More and more women. Somehow the men seemed to be dropping out. Are you sure it wasn't your imagination? No, more and more women calling more and more shots. Oh, and talking about shots. I was being sniped at every day at the office. You wanted to see me, boss lady? Uh, yes, Tom. I, uh... I don't see any increase in billing for little Lucy. Well, she doesn't want to spend any money. Now, what kind of talk is this from you? Do any of them want to spend any money? That's what selling is all about. Well, nobody, nobody can sell little Lucy. What you're saying is you cannot sell her. Is that it? Well... Because if that's how you sincerely feel, maybe we ought to put someone in there that can... I think about it, Tom. I thought about it, Doctor. But I didn't know what I was going to do about it. And then one day I got a call from an old pal, Terry Ingram. I can say his name because everybody knows about him. He is also in this building, Doctor. Also a patient of yours, I believe. Well, we met for lunch. Terry had been the advertising director at Yum Yummy, who had bought my Barco the Mutt commercial. You mean you lost your job at Yum Yummy, Terry? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got canned. Uh, when was it? Uh, a week or so after you were taken off the account. Uh, what happened? You know my assistant, Penelope Maskell. Hmm? Uh, she's in there now. Well, how'd that happen? Hmm? And they got this new vice president of marketing, uh, Barbara Yates. Uh, she shook the place up. Oh. Another woman. Mm -hmm. Terry, Terry, isn't it obvious there's a kind of revolution taking place? Oh, like what? The women. The women, Terry, are slowly but surely squeezing us out everywhere. Uh, uh, look, I don't know. After all, that's philosophy. I leave that to you. <laughs> You're a philosopher. Yeah. Tell me, uh, what are you doing now? What am I doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm a thief. A what? A thief. <laughs> Come on, Terry, how can you say you're a thief? <laughs> because it's true. How could you become a thief? Well, I couldn't get another job. I mean, my whole life was devoted to yummy, yummy. You know, I worked my way up to account executive. 
Hey, I thought I was set for life. And one fine day, I was out. Now, look, could I start all over again at the age of 47? Yeah, yeah, but a thief? It's the only way I could use my experience. I, 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 I can't follow you, Terry. What experience? Look, I am a specialist. I know all professional thieves specialize. Did you know that? Well, I... I, I, I spent my life in private industry. And so I concentrate on stealing industrial and commercial <laughs> and promotional secrets. Oh, a fantastic field. Now, you can make a fortune. Me? Absolutely. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Tom. Ah, uh, no, no, I, I wouldn't be interested. Now, Tom, it's no secret. You're on your way out of the agency. Now, boss lady has a knife sharpened for you. Then you'll be pounding the pavements. I'm sure I'll find something. No, you won't. You've already been looking. You can't even get a nibble. I wouldn't even know how to be a thief. Oh, that thievery is as old as mankind, so it must be something that comes naturally. As a matter of fact, I have a proposition for you. You have? Mm hmm We could make a million. Split it down the middle, 500 grand apiece, huh? How does that sound? Wow. Uh, uh, you know your account? Little Lucy's lively libation. Yeah, please. Not while I'm eating. Well, the old lady who runs it, she has got that formula. That secret ingredient, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's what makes the drink. Yeah, not for me. Ah, who are you? Fifty million people have to pour down that belly wash every day or else they'll beat their wives and kick the dog. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunately true. So she has a competitor. Little Lucy does. And this competitor would love to get their hands on that formula. And I told him, one million bucks is the asking price. You mean... You mean you've been talking to people about it? Sure. It's a toss set. Now, with your help, <laughs> there is absolutely no problem. With my help? Now, what makes you think I'm going to help? Oh, you will, Tommy. You will. Will he? Tom Raglan has been an honest man all his life. But what, what does that mean? Are people honest from principle or because nothing has been worth stealing? Or is it a little of each? These are involved philosophical questions, so uh, why don't you philosophize over them? till I return with Act Three. If a tree falls in a deserted forest and no one hears the crash, does that mean there has been no noise? Or in other words, does sound exist only if someone can hear it? This may appear trivial to you, but there are basic principles of science and even philosophy involved here. And uh, what does it have to do with our story? Just this. Can a man be considered honest if he has never really been tempted? And you were tempted, Mr. Raglan? Oh, yes. Yes, Dr. Pascal. Of course, Terry was right. He said I would indignantly reject his proposition at first, but gradually... Yes? Well, Helen had already taken the job teaching at the university. And boss lady was cracking the whip was as if I had no choice, but how, how was I going to get my hands on that formula? How could I get it from little Lucy? Seduce her. Seduce her? The woman is going on 80. <laughs> That's the age when they love to hear about it. All right, all right. What, what do you expect me to do? Get the formula from her. The formula? It's, it's like her life's blood. So if we have to, we'll take that too. But, but, now, Terry, you said you ran a clean operation. Hey, for the most part. Now, how? How can I get that formula? Think of half a million bucks. Something will occur to you. The enormity of what Terry suggested, Doctor. When I realized its implications, it overwhelmed me. I fought against the idea. But... Not too hard, and not too long. <laughs> hard, long. Those are relative terms, Doctor. Well, I finally 
decided to do it. Not for myself, but for a cause. What cause? I wanted to alert man to the dangers that threaten him. Dangers? From the insidious, all-pervasive takeover of the world by the women. Oh, we're back to that. No, we never left it, Doctor. And that's... That's when I figured out the way to get the formula. And what was that? I was inspired by poetry. By Browning's poem, How Do I Love Thee? Let Me Count the Ways. How would this help you to steal the formula? No, listen. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Oh, what's that? What, what did you say? Uh, it's just a poem. Oh, what kind of poem? You're not here to recite a poem. Just to report on labels. Yes, I know, I know, but I uh, I couldn't help it. You couldn't help what? Something. Something has happened to me. Oh, I'll wager. You see, I've, uh, I've come here to sell you. I know that. And instead, you have sold me. Sold you what? Well, you have sold me the concept of dignity, integrity, the, the truth, the truth must be in the product. Yes. And, and so I shall return to my office and write my letter of resignation. In other words, you'll quit before you get fired. You failed your assignment. Oh, no, 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 I didn't fail. I succeeded. I lost the little Lucy account, but I found myself. That's why I love you. And not like a lover, but as an angel. Because you have reclaimed me. What? What is your angle, young man? You know, it's strange. For the first time in my life, I don't seem to have one. Well, I... I'll miss you. Thank you. I'll, uh... I'll think of you always as I see you going down to the syrup room where you mix the formula for little Lucy. <laughs> I suppose you see it as a huge kitchen with an enormous vat... And a ladle. I suppose. No, it's nothing like that. It's a huge computer. Oh? It's a computer. And each day I feed into it the information that controls the formulation in every little Lucy bottling plant in the world. Oh. You, you seem genuinely interested. Well, I, uh, I'm fascinated. Oh, would you like to come with me? Oh, yes. Yes. Notice I have armed guards stationed along the corridor. And inside the walls are tear gas ducts. Yeah, what fantastic security. <laughs> and here it is. Ah, this... This door, this little green door holds the secret, the great secret. You are the most romantic young man. It's all right, Felicia. This gentleman may come inside with me. Open the door. I uh, just noticed all the guards are women. Yeah, step inside. Why, there's nothing here. Just a desk with, uh, with a computer terminal. Of course. You know, you shouldn't have done this to me. You've destroyed my illusions. Now, you stand by the door. That's it. And I shall walk over here and sit at my computer keyboard. No one must ever get close enough to see. Oh. This is remarkable. Remarkable? Yes, the gap between the generations. How this unique lady spans it from coal stove to computer. Oh, yes, I, I suppose you could say that. No mixing bowls, no fancy jars. Her fingers reach and touch the stars. Oh, my. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, well, I'm inspired. This, this room inspires me. Oh, I... I love poetry. My favorite poet died some years ago. Edgar Guest. He wrote a poem in the newspaper every day. It, it takes a heap of living in a house to make it home. A heap of sun and shatter. And you sometimes have to roam. Oh, oh my. You know 
him, too. Oh, I want to cry when I hear that. Oh, Tom, you... You are a good, decent man. Why can't they all be like you? Oh, my, the signal. <laughs> the bats are ready to receive the syrup. I shall punch out the formula. All over the world, little Lucy lively libation essence is flowing into thousands of bats. And the thirst of millions shall be slaked for another day. Oh, thank you. Thank you for this, this experience, ma'am. Oh, please, you, you must call me Little Lucy. And only you know the formula. Only I. So, uh... How's it coming, Tom? Oh, great, great. Here, every day we go into the computer room, she punches out the formula. Yeah. And every day I get to stand a little bit closer. So soon I'll actually be in a position to watch her fingers on the keyboard of the computer terminal. Yeah? Soon I'll actually be standing over her shoulder. So what you'll get for me is a miniature motion picture camera, which I can then... Say no more. I know just the thing. It's like a fountain pen. You have it in your pocket. No, 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 I, I don't want to go into details. Just get it and give it to me when. Ah, uh, when can we get the money? As soon as you're ready to hand over the formula. We'll have a motion picture of it. <laughs> Let me alert the guys. Yeah, I was all ready, Doctor. All systems would go. It seemed so easy. And then? Yes? I don't know. Maybe it was because I was going to become a thief and betray the confidence of a sweet old lady. Well, that wasn't easy. And then? It was my wife. Your wife? Yes, we were very much in love. Yes? And that morning at breakfast, I happened to look at her. She'd asked me if I wanted a cup of coffee. Just that. Understand? There was something in her voice. Tom. Darling, would you like another cup of coffee? Tom, what are you staring at? You. At me? Why? I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe I just... Remembered something. What? It's something I'll never forget. Then how could you just remember? Well, it's something you remember and forget every day of your life. It's a fact. The fact that you're in love. I love you, Helen. Oh, Tom. Tom, I love you, too. And so, Doctor, I went to little Lucy's office on this morning, prepared to commit a crime. And as I drove there, I suddenly decided I wasn't going to do it. No, no, not for half a million dollars. I wasn't that kind of a guy. I just wasn't going to betray this wonderful old lady. I, I had to get this crazy thing, this weird idea out of my head that there was a plot on the part of the women to take over the world. Well, we were sitting in little Lucy's office waiting for the time to go into the computer room. Uh, all passion spent. Uh, it all should have come earlier when, when I could have enjoyed it. Well, your success came early in your life? Not success for me. Success for all women. Now, it, it, it doesn't matter. What doesn't matter? The revolution. What revolution? Well, you know what revolution. The women's revolution. I don't mean the generalities of women doing better. I mean the takeover. What takeover? The actual physical takeover. Tom, you're sensitive. You see it. You sense it. Everywhere, the men are being forced out. Look at you. I think men and women of goodwill can resolve their difficulties. No. 
That's all gone, Tom. Helen and I will, always. Oh, no. That's gone, too. Helen chose the revolution over you. Now, I can't believe that. The first day you came to my office, I disliked you. Why? Because of your attitude toward my libation. I told you you'd called it insipid slop. You asked me how I knew. Uh, how did you know? How could I know? Whoever heard you use that expression? Your wife. Oh, no. She phoned me and told me. Helen? She phoned you and told you why? Because I'm her regional commander. I don't know what happened after that, Doctor. The next thing, I was on the floor of the living room. And a police officer was standing over me. And Helen, Helen was lying there dead. They told me I killed her with my bare hands in a fit of fury. And here I am. Yes. May I give you my reaction, Mr. Raglan? You never realized your potential. Perhaps you never had one. You're a failed poet. You settled for advertising doggerel. After a while, you failed even at that. Your wife took over the support of the household. It was intolerable. You had to destroy her. You invented this entire justification. This idea of a woman's takeover of the world. But there are facts. There are facts to support anything and everything. You have found the facts to support your own concept of reality. Sooner or later, you must come to an acceptance of your own inadequacy. Accept it. Learn to live with it. Do you... Do you understand? Yeah, I... Uh, I think so. I'm... Uh, I'm tired. Rest now. We accomplished a great deal. We'll meet again tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Hello, boss lady, Dr. Pasco here. Look, little Lucy has got to be relieved of her command. Why? She talks too much. That's why. Would you like to hear a nice male chauvinist comment? Here's one for what it's worth. Women will never be able to successfully plot or plan a secret takeover. Because how can you expect a woman to keep a secret? Oh, I'm not too good at keeping too many secrets myself. I'll have a few for you in just a few minutes. Is there a war between men and women? Probably. But if it's kept within proper bounds and carried on in a proper fashion... It can be the most delightful war there is. A war where even the losers are winners. And you can all also be winners if you listen seven times each week. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Bryna Rayburn, Joan Shea, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search.